Hello everyone, welcome to Family Home Evening. When discussing the Book of Mormon, it's pretty common to talk about our favorite Book of Mormon heroes. But you can only wonder how massively swole Captain Moroni must have been so many times before the subject dries up. So here are five of my favorite Book of Mormon heroes who get chronically overlooked. Number one, the 60 Stripling Warriors. But wait, wasn't it 2,000 Stripling Warriors? But first, yes. In Alma Chapter 53, 2,000 young men volunteered to join the war and fight to protect their homes and families. In Chapter 56, they had their first battle, in which miraculously none of them were killed. But it's easy to forget that in just the next chapter, they were joined by 60 more young men. This is usually treated as just a footnote in the inspiring story of the Stripling Warriors, but these 60 are a bit more interesting to me than the first 2,000. These are the ones who didn't go at first. It had only been a few months since the 2000 went, so it probably wasn't that they were too young to fight then, but were old enough now. Maybe they had responsibilities they couldn't drop right away. Maybe they were scared to fight a war. Or maybe they just didn't want to go. The fact that these young men delayed suggests to me that it was hard for them. And that difficulty makes me respect their decision to go a lot. And they served faithfully and selflessly. In their first battle with the Stripling Warriors, when most of the Nephites almost gave way before the Lamanites, those 2,060 were firm and undaunted, and it was mainly because of them that the battle was won. Every single one of the 2,060 had received many wounds, but not a single one was killed. And despite whatever reasons had made them hesitate to join the army, those 60 heroes stayed with Helaman for the rest of the war. Number two, the unnamed maid servant. This girl is never named, and she only appears in two verses, but her actions prevented the overthrow of the Nephites' liberty. She was a servant to a man named Morianton, an abusive man who was the leader of the city of Morianton. He had planned to take possession of the land northward. The politics of the situation aren't explained, but if they had gone through with it, it would have laid a foundation for serious consequences among the people of Nephi, which would have led to the overthrow of their liberty. This is right after the start of a long, difficult war against Amalekiah and the Lamanites, and the biggest problem the Nephites faced during it was dissension. So in the middle of all this, Morianton beat his maidservant severely. That motivated her to find a way to escape from her master, and she went straight to Moroni and told him everything she knew about Morianton's plans. She's hardly even in the story, she only shows up for a couple of lines, but what she does in that short time is impressive. So next time someone says there are no women in the Book of Mormon besides Abish, just remember this unnamed hero, who not only escaped from physical abuse, she played a crucial role in what could have been the biggest disaster of the war. Number three, the five witnesses. After the war was over, it didn't take too long before the Nephites became fairly wicked again. So when the prophet Nephi was inspired to reveal that the chief judge had been murdered, they sent five men to see if it was true. And as they ran, the five men said, we don't believe that Nephi is a prophet or that he was sent by God. But if we find out the chief judge was murdered, like he said, then we will believe him. And when they arrived at the scene, they saw that Nephi was telling the truth. When the people showed up, they mistook the five men for the killers and threw them in prison. The wicked judges insisted that Nephi couldn't know anything about the murder unless he were involved. But when the five witnesses were cleared of the crime and released from prison, they rebuked the judges and contended with them one by one until they confounded them. This is amazing because they started out believing that Nephi was lying. He claimed he was sent by God and he prophesied a lot of bad things if the people didn't repent. And these five thought the judges were right and that Nephi was making it all up but they didn't let that assumption stop them from accepting the truth. They were astonished exceedingly to find out that Nephi was right. But when they saw that his prophecy was true, they believed the rest of what he had said was also true. So much that they were converted while they were in prison and even shared their testimonies with others after they were released. Some people were even converted based on their testimony. They went from doubt to faith, regardless of their preconceived notions, because they were honest seekers of truth. Number four. Mosiah the first. The King Mosiah we all remember was not the first king with that name. He was actually the grandson of the first King Mosiah, who was mentioned briefly in the Book of Omni. What's interesting is it seems like Mosiah wasn't the king at first, because it says he was made king over the land of Zarahemla, while the Nephites' capital was in the land of Nephi. He may have actually been a prophet, because he was warned of the Lord to flee out of the land of Nephi and take with him as many as would hearken unto the voice of the Lord. They were led by many preachings and prophesyings, led by the power of God through the wilderness, until they found a city called Zarahemla. 
The people of Zarahemla had come out of Jerusalem close to the same time as Lehi and his family, but they didn't bring the scriptures with them, so over time they became a broken, degenerate people. So they were thrilled when Mosiah brought the Nephites, because the Lord had told them to bring the scriptures with them. Mosiah quickly unified their language, united the people, and was appointed king over all of them. He also translated a stone by the gift and power of God, which told of Coriantumr and the end of his people. Mosiah was a great prophet who not only saved the faithful saints and restored the gospel to an exceedingly numerous people who had lost it, he re-established the kingdom in the land where the Nephites would be headquartered for the entire rest of their civilization in Zarahemla. But speaking of Coriantumr, Number 5. Coriantumr Coriantumr was king over all the descendants of Jared and his brother. You might be surprised that I would call him a hero of the Book of Mormon, when he and his whole kingdom were so wicked that the prophet Ether prophesied that he would live to see the complete destruction of his entire nation and his land occupied by another people. Even worse, after Coriantumr had heard this prophecy, he tried to kill Ether. But that's not where his story ends. After several years of war and the death of nearly two million of his people, he remembered what Ether had told him. Not only that, he remembered the words of all the prophets and saw that they were all fulfilled, and he began to repent. From that point on, he actually tries multiple times to stop the war. He tries talking with Shiz, the opposing leader, but his own people were so wicked and filled with rage that it was too late to reason with them, and they continued the war until everyone was dead except for Coriantumr. It's a tragedy that would make Sophocles cry. But here's where it becomes amazing to me. Coriantumr did repent. Too late to save his people, but he did repent. And when the people of Meluk arrived, I expect they welcomed him with open arms. After decades of war and wickedness, he finally found rest once he repented, and he spent nine peaceful months with them before he died and was buried by them. Coriantumr may have been the worst person in the entire Book of Mormon, but he was still able to repent. And that's heroism to me. One thing that stands out to me about all these overlooked heroes is that most of them were imperfect people. They weren't all like Captain Moroni. They made mistakes, were afraid, went inactive, or were recent converts. But they made the best of the situation they were in, finding faith in the most difficult of trials. And they ended up making a huge difference to the people around them. And I'm grateful their brief stories were included in the Book of Mormon. I hope you appreciated focusing on them a little bit too. There are a lot more overlooked Book of Mormon heroes, and it was hard to trim it down to only five, so maybe I'll do another video like this sometime in the future. But for now, I'd like to hear who are some of your favorite overlooked or underrated people in the Book of Mormon. Let's talk about them in the comments below. Thanks for joining me for Family Home Evening, and have a great week.